Hello. Happy Monday. Lovely to see you guys. Well, not that I can see you, but you know what I mean. Um, right. It's Monday. So, uh, right, I've got some lovely orders to show you today. I have got my Halibut. Uh, and it is a little soggy, but I'm going to put it on to show you because I'm really excited about it. I want to tell you what happened with the blocking and all that stuff. Um, I'm wearing my, morning Julie, my Sailor, which it occurred to me this morning when I was deciding what I might wear today at home. Um, morning Jane. Hi Angela. Hello Susie. Uh, morning Carla. <laughs> Wow. Hi, Linda. This is great. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I, it occurred to me when I was putting this on this morning. Hello, Helen, Karen. Um, that, uh, that I have used these colours before. So maybe my go-to for nautical knits or anything to do with the sea is always red, yellow and a bit of blue. Um, good morning. Yeah, I love this sailor. I do. I love this. And I do. I tend to wear it with my cuffs um, folded back because I always like to make extra long arms because um, I just like it under jackets and stuff. But I do tend to fold these ones back. And um, yeah, it's weird how this one is also yellow, red and blue and my halibut is as well. Good morning. So, yeah, I will show you the halibut in a sec. I'm going to pluck some parcels and I'll put that on and I'll show you all the stuff and we can have a little chat. Um, and then anything else? I don't know. Maybe Darren will remind me of anything else that I need to talk about. Right. OK, so good morning, Suffolk. <laughs> right. It is. Let me give you the weather report first. Um, it's sort of greyish today, isn't it? We had a nice weekend, but it's sort of greyish. Yeah. Mm. It is decidedly autumnal and the temperature has dropped a little bit to the point where I do probably need a jacket now to walk home, but not to walk in. Um, yeah, maybe you're all here for the halibut. I don't know. Maybe I just have to keep you hanging on right till the end. The, the halibut that Darren hates. Darren, your hair looks funky today. You've got some sort of weird bedhead thing going on. <laughs> it's <laughs> Hat head. Darren, Darren's wearing hats already. I'm not even wearing jackets yet. So, right. Um, uh, right. So, I'm packing up a couple of DHLs this morning. Some of them have already gone. Um, oh, yeah. It's very still, though. It is very still. It's very warm. Um, what? They're packed. They haven't got, but they have been packed and they've got labels. So anyway, so this next one is beautiful wool stock light. So, this person has ordered this gorgeous color combo. I adore. Um, it's going to Germany. Oh, it's an artist. Oh, it's one of my artists. Oh, that's why I like the colour convo because I uh, designed it. So that's good. Um, yeah, the artist shawl. Oh, we could talk about that too. Uh, bound to be popular if Darren hates it. Yeah, Darren actually does not like it. You Well, you like, I don't understand why you like it so much is what you said this morning. Okay, yeah, you don't, you, well, like, because you disliked the Missoni, but you don't understand why I love my Halibut. Anyway, this is the artist. Well, why would you not want to put fish all over you? Well, that's not an answer to why you want to. But I like fish. I like Halibuts. I like the yarn. I love the motif. Anyway, there's a lot of reasons. We'll talk about it. So but anyway, this is the artist shawl. This is my artist shawl, my version, um, which I did with different yarn. Um, and it's lovely. Um, and I definitely prefer like the shawl to the new cardigan pattern. Um, the cardigan I would mod, we could talk about that, but yeah, this is a great shawl. And I particularly love it because of these textured sections and this stripy section to go along with the motif section. And that's why I would change the cardigan because I would include some of that stuff. Cause for me, it's just too, it's just too much, too busy without those plain bits. Well, they're not even plain, but you know what I mean. Um, thank you for that, Darren. You can put it back when you're next up this way. Right. Let me pack this DHL. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> put your thin wrong. Um, I'm just scrolling. Sorry. I know this is really weird. 
leather bag has arrived. Yay! It's lovely. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, yeah, so DHLs, yeah. So the DHLs always go out first. And they are a more expensive way to ship for sure. But it's sort of like you get your package much, much more quickly, particularly for internationals. But even UK it arrives the next day. Um, but it's also like the unofficial way to it's like the skip the queue ticket by by ordering using like DHL as your shipping method it um it sort of jumps you to the top of the queue and um particularly after weekends when I'm still catching up here on Friday orders Friday evening orders and then Saturday and then Sunday so like a Sunday might not go out until tomorrow or Wednesday on really busy weeks like if I've sent out a newsletter it might go out even later than that so the DHLs are like an unofficial skip the queue ticket that's how I like to think of it I should probably write that on the website huh why why would that change it no not everyone's happy to pay like extra money for shipping especially if you're not like needing your stuff next day some people do need it next day which is fine. But um, yeah, if you need it next day, then DHL is amazing. Right. But it can be expensive. And they're really expensive if you're shipping to remote locations. So um, like if you're in the Hebrides or something like that. Right. Okay. Ah, this one's bursting out of its packaging. So good morning, people. Um, right. Uh, what else is new? What else is new? I don't know. Anything? We don't. Uh, we lost rugby, but we don't need to talk about that. Okay. Yeah, we won't talk about that because that doesn't really interest me. Um, no, fish we can talk. About. Fish we'll talk about. Yep. <clears throat> um, oh, an update on the Gepard orders. There's now two Gepard orders that I'm waiting for. Um, daughter emailed me this morning to say one of them should be here tomorrow and then the other one looks like it's the day after so we'll see that would be nice if they do turn up uh, what colour should I put on this light blue I think so morning Sarah uh, I'm desperate to put that jumper on to show you but I'm going to just make you wait and stay with me Otherwise, you'll just bugger off and leave me here by myself. Okay. Here is a DHL box that I prepared earlier. Okay. Loving my blue woolly yeah, It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. I know, it's lovely. Um, and it blocks out so nicely it's such a sponge though which is why well look I blocked it yesterday I soaked it yesterday morning so um I, it was always going to be a long shot about whether it was going to be ready today and I didn't put it on the heated floor which I probably should have done because then it definitely would have been here and ready for today but um so it is soggy but uh still like I, it works really, it's one of those yarns that will soak up all the water in the world, like all of it. Um, but then when you roll it in a towel, it does release most of it. So. so that's good. Right, so now I'm packing up a whole box here of coconuts goodies. And for anyone that's waiting on stuff that's out of stock from coconuts, I did order more this weekend. So it'll be here sometime this week. But this person's got the accessory roll, some nice stitch markers a counter, a maker's keep, uh, oh, there's loads of goodies in here. Um, what else? We've got some claw clips, some maker's clips. So yeah, nice little box of stuff. So we've got some stuff coming in. Oh, and also just on the topic of cocoa knits, um, we are now the official UK way of, so we've got an online course um, that is the Cocoa Knits course for the Emma, which is like a whole series of amazing lessons and things um, available to buy 
on our website. So it's all linked up to Cocoa Knits and it's, it will, like, you get it on our website. I think it's linked on my homepage at the minute. I did put it on there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Cocoa Knits Emma. I should show you that. Uh, I've got an Emma here, so I've got a few Cocoa Knits items. Really good course for anyone that wants to do the Cocoa Knits patterns. And then that course stays um, in your sort of tribe library forever. Uh, so, yeah. If you're wanting a little online course, it's there. Uh, oh, hi. Hi, Alina. Oh, Gina, hi. Oh, Gina, while I'm talking, if you're still on there, I don't know if you're still here. Um, but I was looking up that pattern that you want to make with the merino possum this morning. Again, I was just eyeing that up because it's such a great idea. And the name of it's gone out of my head again. So if you are on here, can you just remind me of what that pattern was? Because I think I want to make that. Maybe it's the next thing on my needles. Because um, I obviously cast off my um, halibut on uh, Sunday morning. And then yesterday I just didn't have anything on my needles. And last night I cast on that little... Um, that hat by Pearl Soho, the pointy one with the ear flaps. It might even be called the ear flap hat, I don't know. Anyway, I've got a little bit left over uh, woolier in the red and the blue, so I thought I'd just make a, a little ear flap hat to wear with my jumper. Sometimes it's a cute little pattern, it's a fun one. Um, okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Uh, placed my first order with you, November Art Yarns, nice, yeah, I've got a bunch of that to pack up today. Uh, hello, Marsha, do you only knit one thing at a time, Millie? Um, no, not really, I do have, like, my main squeeze that is, like, my main thing one at a time, um, but I do pretty much always have at least one thing on the needle so the, my my in-betweener right now is still the sleeves of my second Paulina which I I do crack on with a little bit when I'm between knits so um but it's it's sleeves and it's just fairly plain so it's not like something that's gonna make me wake up really really early in the morning for it um and then yeah but other than that yeah it is it tends to be sort of two things these days it used to be three it's now about to, but then when I get a project like that one um, that I get completely obsessed with, then the, and nothing else gets a look in. That's all I'm gonna. That's all I'm gonna knit. Right. Okay. So this person, including me, including Darren. Darren has to do all the cooking and stuff when I'm when I'm in a knit obsessed place. Actually, I've been pretty good this week. I have been like doing st other stuff. Yeah. I'm still doing all my workouts. I'm still doing all my admin. I'm like totally caught up on live chats and things, like totally. So yeah. Um, so it's not like I let everything else go to pot, but uh, um, but it also means when I've got a really good thing on the needles that I'm like cracking through audiobooks too, which is like it's just so good. Okay, so anyway, this next parcel is um, Isaya Boutle in these two colours. Um, that one's obviously the main and that's the contrast along with silk mohair. Um, and I think this might be one of our Aluna kits. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, so this is an Aluna kit. Looks like there's enough here for long sleeves. Ellen's. Ellen. Oh, Ellen's the one that added an extra ball because she decided mm. she wants to make it long sleeved. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, I did finally, I, did, I said, I, I think I said that I'd have it done on Wednesday, on Friday, and I did have my Luna kits done by Friday, so I'm not too bad. With, uh... I didn't have my bit of it done until Saturday. No, you did it on Friday. I launched it on Friday night. Did I? Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's good of me. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. My bit of it, like your bit was... Well. <laughs> no, no, go on, finish. Well, yours was what, sort of just... To, is that what you're going to say? Important, but, you know... Vital. Like, just anyone could have done it, is what I was going to say. Wow. Just keep the camera on you. 
<laughs> okay, a Luna. Oh, no, sorry. I'm just going to use a whole sheet of paper for this one. It's a bit squishy. So. The admin. I did have to explain it to you multiple times as well. Which makes it more my bit than your bit. I'm happy to quit while I'm behind. <laughs> I work, I try to work from home on Fridays. This is the first time it's happened in a long time, like this Friday just gone. I, I actually get a lot more done admin wise when I work from home compared to coming into work. There's fewer distractions. My knitting was taunting me, but I did not pick it up. So, yeah. Um, okay, where are we? Oh, Gina. I love knitting with this. It's gorgeous. So Gina's talking about the um, merino possum, which is gorgeous. And the pattern is the Bazile. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad. You're going to have to send me photos because I just, I, I mean, I want to do the exact same colours that you did. So send me pics, Gina. Um, yeah, the Bazile is lovely. It looks really squishy. That merino possum is so good. I don't know if Hannah is watching. I know that she sent me an email very early this morning, but then Hannah's in Australia, so probably not very early this morning for her. Um, <laughs> I have knitted the Basile and love it. Oh, cool. That's good to know. Is it a well-written pattern, you two? Is it one that you'd recommend? Um, so also this weekend I was chatting with um oh god i don't actually know what her name is and i was chatting to her it's a bit crap anyway um i was chatting to gray level knitter who is in asia somewhere <laughs> oh, i really should know this anyway i was chatting to her on dms so it's not like um you know it's not like a chat chat but it was a chat and um because i was talking to her about her new pattern that it, she's going to be releasing in november like this month um, and it's being released in Korean first. Oh, so she's in Korea. So that makes sense. Yeah, so I was, she's going to release it in Korean first and then in English shortly afterwards. Um, and she hasn't started, I don't think, the English test knitting. So I asked her if, about that and if I could jump on because it's this wicked looking jacket, which I can't remember being so excited about a knitting pattern. Um and I think, and it's also quite a complicated one, and a, and a um, it uses the Teddy Deer and the Woolier together by Gepard, uh, and it's double knit as well, and like very customizable. So that I'm like, I really want to make it, and um, I'm really excited to sort of dig into color combos for that one but I also think that you know how I've been saying I want to do a um a double knit knit along I think that might be the one I bought her other pattern as well this weekend for the yacht club vest which I adore um but I'm not sure like having read through the whole pattern which is so well written it's phenomenal I'm not sure as it's a really great one for a knit along because Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe after this, if you guys um, want to check, or anyone that's watching later could check the Yacht Club pattern, see if it's one that you would want to do for Cal. I think it would be a really good one, just be mainly because it's quite a relatively quick knit for a double knit, and also you can make your own motifs, which I really like the idea of. And she's very cleverly done charts so that you can have the double knit writing, so the characters legible on both sides, which is very impressive. So that's the grey level knitter. It doesn't mean that you have to leave this and then, like, don't leave me. Like, check after. Uh, but her new thing that's on her needles right now is absolutely mind-bogglingly phenomenal. So I think that should be the double knit knitter one. Yeah, the Aztec, the winter Aztec jacket thing. Oh, my God, it's so good. Um, and the yarn, I mean, I love I love both those yarns, so the woolly yarn and the teddy bit. So I think that would be great to do. But then that would be one that we would do later, because if she's only sort of testing it this month, like the English side, then it might not be, I don't know when exactly it will be released, but it might be a later one. So we have got time, potentially, to slip in a little halibut cow 
in between so that could be cool right uh, I'm gonna pack this order this is an order for um, the merino cloud in the neon sky colorway that's the new uh limited edition art yarns one um along with a complementary skein of uh normal merino cloud so that's lovely um and we did sell out of i think every base except for beaded silk i guess i under ordered it's so hard to know how popular any color is going to be but this one um i definitely under ordered so i've got some more coming um i wrote to iris on I don't know, maybe early Friday morning and incre and I'm in time to order some more of this so I've ordered a bunch more which is available to pre-order and it will be here soon because they're pretty quick. I've ordered it in Merino Cloud and Cashmere and uh, Silky Twist and Mohair, yeah the double Mohair. So that's all on them. Um... Yeah, the Gina, the, the Gina Carmen, the Aztec <laughs> It looks great, doesn't it? I actually, she's got a photo on her feed where she's not put any sleeves on it. And I really like the look of it as a sleeveless, like oversized vest where it's ready for drop sleeves, but it doesn't have drop sleeves so that it's got those big sort of overhangs on the um, on the shoulders. I love the look of that. And, I, and I, I feel like maybe I would wear it more as a sort of big oversized vesty thing. So... Um, you do the sleeves last though on that pattern so you could always sort of make that decision later I guess mm, okay buttons. Button, maybe button, maybe. oh you're cracking through there mm -hmm. um, right I'm going to do one more parcel after this and then I will show you my halibut. I had fun making that reel this weekend. By the way. I had made another reel that was a bit less stupid, and slightly more professional, with a few more photos, but I went with the silly one. But I need to take pictures of it like on to post on Ravelry and stuff so that you can see how it fits. I'm so happy with it. Right. Okay, let's do this one. I'll do this one and then I will put on the jumper. Ooh. My nails have been so neglected for about, I don't know, maybe two months now. I have found other things that are taking my time instead of sorting these bad boys out. I really should get them sorted. Um, since living up here, I haven't been like paying to go to any nail techs. I've been just doing them myself. How, Debbie, how did you do that sad, sad, squishy face at the start of the reel? It's bizarre, isn't it? It's an app that I discovered that I was playing with this weekend. So one of the shops that I follow sent me a, an email where they'd had that as a GIF on the top of the email. And I'm like, oh, that looks so cool. So I uh, looked it up and then I've made a bunch of pictures of it. I'll post some stories. There's some really, really, really weird ones. I've got this one where, where I took a picture of the dog and he's like blowing up like a balloon. It's very cool. Anyway, I'll put it in stories later. It's a bit weird. Um, oh. Is anyone else having connection? It's not me, is it? Or is it just you, Linda, that's having connection issues? Hopefully ours is, feels like ours is good, but I wouldn't know. Okay, so this order that I'm doing is some gorgeous black silk yak four ply. So that's the hand dyed silk yak that's amazing, along with the undyed camel silk. Skein of that. Um, those are drapey gorgeousness. And then also one of these beautiful um, Rivenitz Blue Face Leicester Rainbow Mini Skein things. And that is the jewel, the jewel rainbow. Really, really pretty. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, it's really pretty. Look, I'll show you again. Oh. Really gorgeous. 
I don't know if this is yours. I'd love to know what you're making with that. It's really nice. Um, when I showed Iris at Art Yarns my, a photo of my halibut last week, she had asked whether I thought it might work with the contrast being like one of the self-striping yarns or um, like a variegated type yarn. And uh, I answered that I didn't think so because there's already so much going on in it. But I know that and maybe she's going to give it a go because she's um, creating sort of longer, uh, longer yardage skeins of silky twist right now that are dyed in the ombre way so that there's nice long transitions which sounds gorgeous so that would be nice for making jumpers and stuff but I'm not sure I would do it for the halibut I don't know I have seen a couple of examples of it where people have used self-striping or variegated yarns and I just think I don't know well yeah I don't know it's just not for me I I, 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 I like the um, bold contrast in that sweater pattern more I think um connection is great down under oh excellent okay cool oh okay good to know yeah because it feels like it's fine it normally just say on the screen when the connection is poor but um yeah good okay let's get this one out button what color could be any color i guess maybe black Oh, that's a pretty one. Okay. Oh, oops, sorry, I'm fumbling because I've cocked up so much. Sound is not 100%. Oh, it might be because I forgot to bring in my mic necklace, so I've got it pinned to my t-shirt under here. Maybe I'll, sorry. I'll put it on here, and then I'll just have to remember when I put the halibut in it on in a minute to take it off again. Halibut loses strikingness, I think, with anything but solid. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I definitely wouldn't use like a anything but solid for the background, like for sure. Liz Farthing, thank you so much for my order of the Women's Wealth Double Wrap Cuff and sewing needles. Yay! Oh, you're welcome. That's a really nice cuff. I love that one. By Jewel. Knitting Jockle, loving it. Ah, oh, yay. Amazing. Oh, I do love that jumper. Um... Bex Hill on sea, receiving you loud and clear. Thank you very much, Elaine. Excellent. Oh, okay, so maybe it was just that that was sitting underneath the jumper or something. I'll have to, um, yeah, I left the little necklace on my trousers pocket. Right, let's have a book. I'm going to just let me take this off. Pop it back on here and then I'll put it on the thing. One sec, I'm going to get things. Um... Halibut is not quite as warm as this one too, so that will be. Shout out for the oh, shout out for the kinnikerin. Where are my kinnikerin chicken Mondays? Okay, so this is a little bit soggy, just a little bit, not not massively, um, and it's a little bit crinkled now because I shoved it in my bag wet to walk it to work today. But oh god, it's so nice. Actually, it's quite cool feels nice and cool on my skin because it's um soggy so look at this i right i need to turn this down so that i can move it about a little bit uh have i got the mark oh yeah it's on my t-shirt underneath thanks i'll put it on the jumper i'm just going to move you guys to over here so that i can have some room to step back ah uh, sorry don't fall over right so that's microphone up. Okay, so here it is. Yeah, so the blocking I did, and I did. I was sort of relatively aggressive with the block because um, I made it cropped, so it did finish sort of here, 
and I did need it to grow and I knew it would grow. So I was fairly aggressive with the, with the, you know, the length blocking of it, which I think is brilliant, but it also means that the sleeves are quite long, which I love. So that's great. I toyed with the idea of doing the ribbing on the sleeves in a different color, but I just for the hell of it. Just, just, <laughs> I see what you did there. Cause I had leftover red and light blue or the lighter blue, but, um, I, I do like, like folding my cuff saver when to just give me that option. So that's fine. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, beautiful it's drapey it's still really light you know actually it used to have quite a lot of yarn so I use six balls of is Willie a 50 grams it is isn't it pretty sure it's 50 grams feels like 50 grams right. feels like 50 grams just double check for me uh, but I use six 50 gram balls for the yellow so that's 300 grams and then maybe a quarter of a ball of the red a full ball of the navy so that's wait 650 so it's probably, I should weigh it, it's about 700 grams, I reckon, the whole thing. Wait, not 700, 300, 400, it's about 400 grams, ignore me. Um, yeah, just probably just under. And it feels drapey and light, and it does feel a little bit damp, yeah, but I would still totally wear it damp. Um, but I love the fit, and I'm so glad that I didn't... Uh, split for the sleeves under the fish where it's supposed to be because I would have been like this <laughs> trying to uh, wear it so yeah look at the colors it's so pretty that the dark yarn didn't bleed onto the light yarn which is always a bit like oh, is it gonna do it it didn't do it in the swatch so I, you know I didn't think it would in this but it could happen with different balls but it doesn't it hasn't and I adore the colors and my fat fish under my arm, there they are. I mean, I don't think you'd even know that they were fat fish unless you were very observant. You could be like, thin fish, fat fish, thin fish. So yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? And like, I love the way that, also I have to say that it was such a joy to have more color work to come back to when I was picking up the sleeves to knit because I did all these rows of stocking stitch, which actually there's not that many, but it felt like a lot. Then a lot of deep ribbing. Um, and then I could look forward to, whereas normally you dread it, I look forward to getting my sleeves back on my needle so that I can continue this bit of color work here before just like really, I just flew through the rest of the sleeves. And I didn't do very deep ribbing on these because they were already sort of long enough. Also, I had about, that much yarn left when I'd finished um, because I'd saved whatever was left to finish the cast off the bind off here so I mean I, I had no yarn left which is kind of a shame because I need a little bit for my hat but um, actually I should have a bit because I haven't darned in my I haven't darned in my ends because I wanted to I didn't know whether it'd be long enough and I'd have to come back to it and you know when you um, you know when you do a sewn bind off it's like impossible to rip out if you don't know where the end is. So, um, right, hang on, let me just read. Oh, it looks like you like it. Yay. Yeah, it's popular. <laughs> just like, like, it's such a, Darren doesn't like it. Uh, I don't need, I don't, whatever. I wonder, does it look look up? Does it look the same brightness in real life as it is on camera? Pretty much, well, right? yeah. Yeah, it's the same. It's pretty bright. Gordy. It's not gaudy. It's not gaudy at all. This is amazing. Stick a jacket on it. Let me grab, grab a jacket. I'll show you. So, stick a shawl on it. Even like a really, even like a really, um, even like a really plain. You you know that um, shawl, that blue sky one, that one that's shouldn't be like hanging over the rail but it is that one that big one what's it called can you just pass me that yeah you that blue sky shawl what's it called the Gresham can you just pass that bring that but yeah look it fits nicely under a jacket I'll just show you because the armpits are perfect and um it's great under shawl <laughs> I'm doing my QVC bit now right the Gemini fish what's Gemini fish um Thank you, Darren. So this is my Gresham wrap by 
Wolf's by uh, Blue Sky Fibres in Wolfstock and like it's just all gorgeous woolly layering and I just absolutely love right oh I should take so otherwise I might go and work so yeah so obviously yellow is not for everyone but um you can see how it would be really cool to make um in other colours in woolly as well and how we can have a play with the armpits and then if I do do it for a knit along I'd love to do it as like having the option for you guys to make your own motifs because um, what I really want to sort of show is two things I guess the stranded intarsia instead of just doing um, colour work in the round and also I want to show people how to um, split early for sleeves if you've got a motif where you're supposed to wait until the end of it, but you want your armpits not so low. So I want to sort of show how you do that if we did a cow. So Gemini is where two fish are joined together. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I have got two fish joined together, haven't I? Oh yeah, that one. That one. But I don't know as you would know that. Look, that's weird. I guess if you're looking at it that way, it's like, oh, yeah. And then for this one, I thought I was going to run out of the blue. So I did this sleeve first, standard. And then this one, I was pretty sure I was going to run out of the navy. So I've turned part of a couple of these fish into light blues in the bottom. I didn't, I would have been fine, but I was a bit panicking about running out. Um, and so there's some light blue fish head in there did you even notice that that would drive you crazy wouldn't it and then i also changed this motif here to red on that sleeve instead of blue everywhere there. does that drive you crazy no that's port so you're all right port and starboard oh because yeah because red lights on the port side yeah look at that it's very i did that on purpose yeah, yeah for good. like navigation so the port the port light on boats is the red light and it's actually green on the other side, but whatever. Um, on the starboard side, I might keep this on. I love it. I have it just dry while I wear it. Okay, cool. So, uh, I thought that was the Pisces. I don't know. You guys know more than I do when it comes to stuff like that. I'd love that as a knit along. Definitely, I would need to learn how to split sleeves early. Yeah, no, it'd be great. Oh, I should show you the inside out, actually. Well, I'll just lift it up so you can see. So there you can see that it's not um, normal stranded colour work so that I don't have my floats running the whole way across, which is probably also what like means that it's just a really nice light um, jumper. So I, I have stranded, you can see that it's stranded across each flatfish and each motif but I haven't stranded between the motifs um so we've got some sort of nice stretchy lightweight fabric in between of that obviously it's the same on the back and then um then there are the seams so there's a back seam which I'm pretty sure you can't see there um because it's not knit in the round for the intarsia section and then in my underarms here that bit is seamed as well and then that bit is seamed and then this is just um this is just like normal knitting in the round so the, the rest of the body is knit in the round and the rest of the sleeves is knit in the round so yeah uh okay knitting needles waiting for the cow cool i can be quite a quick cow this one so i think we could slip it in slip it in there and amongst all the other stuff that we're doing so then maybe I just need to order a bit more willy art, I don't know. I'll, I think we should do a cow. I'll set it up later this week. Let's set it up later this week. And in the meantime, you guys can be thinking about colours and motifs and things. Mm. <laughs> I'm always subliminally, always at sea. I'm always at sea. How long does it take you to knit that? Uh, this one didn't take any time at all. Probably... I want to say maybe just under two weeks all told and that first week I didn't get a lot done but uh, yeah this one was a uh, super quick hmm? 
not too no obviously just a little just in the evenings but I did I did pick this up like in the mornings. sometimes I don't like I don't always knit a lot in the mornings but this one I was up and knitting early and then um I did much more sort of listening to my book and knitting in the evenings. okay uh right where are we clever i thought for a hideous moment it was eek intarsia in the round no i just there's very few reasons to do intarsia in the well especially if you've got this many different um areas i think if you had like two colors or three maybe even four for intarsia in the round, but not like this it just no nah, there's no point oh you could there's no point wait um what no, you no. thought you could do you could if you didn't want to seam you could do that thing where you do a yarn over to and then knit two together to join in the round at the back so you don't have to then go back and see like sew a sew a seam. But I mean it's only yeah, I just not it's not just don't I wouldn't. But you could. Uh when would you do a cow? I think maybe we'd have to have enough time for people to buy the yarn and have it arrive, so it wouldn't be at least for another two weeks. So yeah. Um Cow, yay. My, oh, thank you. I love my wrong side. I might just put it on wrong side. I'll show you. <laughs> I should be packing parcels. I am going to pack parcels. This well, one's good. Might be I will. Uh, look, it's not my only job here, you know. <laughs> Let me show you my wrong side. I'm a multitasker. So, if I put this on, I don't think I would wear this on the wrong side because the right side is so cool, but just so that you can see it's very abstract don't look at me like that <laughs> um so on the wrong side you can see that i have done fully stranded color work for that top motif where it was just one uh, contrast color which is the blue why are you looking at me i'm now? just learning Fascinated. okay <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is totally stranded. So it almost looks like the underside of one of those ribbons. It's very cool. And then the rest of it I did um, stranded in Tarsia. So there you can see the surgery seam on the back, probably. And um, then you can see the little surgical seam on the underarms, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and then the, the fish. So yeah, I like this bit here. Do you like it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. So, I'll put it back in the right way around. It's such a nice jumper. I will wear this a lot, much to Darren's dismay. Chagrin. Chagrin. I'll wear it with an ear flap hat that's pointy on the top. He doesn't like pointy hats. Okay. Okay, right, let me pack. So this next parcel that I'm packing is very pretty. This is a bunch of Coast by Holst. And there's a bunch of colours happening here. So I'll show you. Some of them are repeats, I think. Yep. Uh, oh, you can't really see them when you see it that way. Oh, I guess I'll show you maybe this way. Anyway, you get the idea. There's some really pretty colours here in the Holst by Coast. So Holst coast is softer than the super soft and it's 55 percent lambswool and 45 percent cotton fingering weight it's lovely so that is what i will pack next i don't know what this person's making it's pretty cool these colors everything's gonna look a bit dull when i've got this bright yellow jumper on though oh this is gorgeous I'm really into this blue right now. It's not like quite that um, crazy electric blue that's been in fashion for the last couple of years, like that really, um, yeah, sort of electric-y one, but it, it's like a deep mid blue. It's so pretty. Right. Oh, God, of course it's an odd number. That means that I'm not gonna have enough. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to just bite the bullet and cut some new paper. <coughs> oh, <coughs> a bit 
coffee today. We had a sore, we've had sore throats in the last couple of days, the two of us. Something going around. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I like the reverse side too. I love looking at the, the reverse side of people's jumpers. I quite often will ask people if I can check out the the wrong side. It's just so interesting the way that it just shows so much about how something is made and um, how neat a knitter is and whether they pay attention to colour dominance or not. I think it's, it's cool. And for this one, I definitely did pay a lot of attention to colour dominance. I mean, I always do pretty much. But this one, um, no, I didn't for the... The only one that I haven't paid any attention to colour dominance is the Jockle because it really didn't matter for that one at all. And the more random it was, the better. But for, for like standard like high contrast colours like this, then I would always pay attention to dominance. But we can talk about that on the cow. Um, double Mohair Limited Edition just arrived. Whoa, that was quick. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. What more? Cool. Oh, that did arrive quickly. Yulia must have shipped that. Oh, okay. So Yulia must have shipped it out on Friday and then it's Monday. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, what wool for the halibut? This is Woolia for the halibut. Woolia for halibut. Well, this that's what I've used. There are options. You don't have to use Woolia. Um, you could use wool stock worsted would be a really good one. Um, I need to just have a little look through the yarns and see which which ones I would recommend for this jumper but there are quite a few in that sort of worsted weight range that, that would work nicely for this so yeah I I love Woolia like I love it but you don't have to like you maybe maybe the color that you really want doesn't exist in this range so it's not mandatory Uh, how about fuzzy fish? Yeah, you could totally do mohair fuzzy fish. That reminds me of that scene in Trading Places. That movie, tra that movie it's one of my favourite ever. Um, it's an Eddie Murphy movie with Dan Aykroyd, sort of a Christmas movie. And um, Dan Aykroyd, when he's the drunk Santa Claus, goes into that hotel and puts that whole smoked fish under his coat and it gets stuck in his hairy beard. Anyway, you just reminded me of that for my second ever favourite movie. Right. We were watching um, Deception, is that what it's called, on Netflix? Maybe it's not Netflix, I don't know, one of those, maybe it's Apple TV, and it's got uh, Kevin Klein in it from A Fish Called Wanda, so that was also quite a fishy connection, wasn't it, Sarah? <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just going to put this little mic on my jump eye just in case fishy connections right. anyway deception is good i would recommend it i would say don't watch it with your children but um as in because of the sex there's a lot it could get a bit uncomfortable maybe unless you all right with graphic sex while your children are in the room so this next one, we watched something else that was a banger this week. It was that police thing with um, with that man from The Hobbit in the office. What's his name? That man from The yeah. Hobbit. What's his name? No Martin. 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 Freeman. Freeman. Freeman? I, I can't remember. Something around. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. It's like this police thing. I should think of the name of it because it's like the best thing that I've watched in quite a while. Okay, so this next order. Sorry, what were we saying? Shiny fish. Oh, shiny. What, what could we use for shiny fish? You guys are making... A whole bunch of Stellaris, nice. maybe? Freeman. Yes, thank you. Martin Freeman. Um, this is... I don't even know if it's new, but we watched it. It's based on a true story and it was called... It was something to do with the plot because he did something that was outside of the rules. Anyway, it's very good. You could look it up. Maybe I'll find it. 
The confession is flipping great. Yeah, it's good. Confession is flipping great, but this Martin Freeman thing is probably better. Moving on. Anyway, moving on. Um, Cashmere Lace by Gepard. This stuff is gorgeous. Is this the light grey colourway? Because if it is, it's sold out. We've got some more of this on the way of the light grey. This one's been really popular. It's beautiful. All of it's beautiful. It's stunning. I'm really seriously considering getting the classic um, Gepard cashmere in as well because that's also stunning. So, yeah, just it's really nice cashmere. Okay, and then the rest of this order is some lovely Isaiah boucle, which I know we're really, really short of, um, and we have got some more on the way, but not every colour. I think there are some sold-out colours now because of Aluna. I'm going to start putting them in a different box because you're picking well out of the order. Am I? Yeah. Okay. I'm just picking what's on the oh, top. No, that's the issue, oh, okay. Do you want me to just get what's in that? So oh, okay, behind. okay. I'm so far behind. And then also, this person's ordered two of these giant balls of cloud tweed, which actually might make interesting fish. I know I said not to do variegated, but I wonder if this was on white. What are you checking, dye lots? Yeah. yeah, they're the same. They are, but it doesn't look good. Mm, but they are. That's just because the way the balls have been balled. Okay. A confession. Is that what it's yes, that's right, Julie. It's called a confession. Exactly, exactly. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, thank you, Karen. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's called confession. It's very good. I've really enjoyed it. Um, and then we, what, we've we sort of been on and off watching Three Body Problems. What? They might care. People want to watch good things when they're knitting and listen to good things. Sorry if you guys don't care what I've been watching on Netflix. But if you've got any good recommendations, I'm all ears. Uh, he's great in Breeders. Yeah, we've watched, um, we sort of watch Breeders on and off in between of stuff when we've run out of stuff. Um, we've watched quite a lot of Breeders. It's, it's good. It's weird though. It's good, but we couldn't figure out for the longest time if it was meant to be comedy because there were some parts of it that were so dark. I don't think it is supposed to be comedy. I don't know what genre it is, but it's, um, it is worth a watch. I agree, Sarah. Yes, TV recommendations are always appreciated, says Lucy and Linda and Sarah. Thank you. If Great you guys point. never watched Prison Break, like when it came out back in the day, I would go back and watch that. It's been advertised a bit recently. I don't know why. Um... But that was probably one of my most favourite things to watch series-wise ever. Wentworth Miller was just phenomenal. And that guy that plays Teabag. So, yeah, Prison Break. Oh, it's an old, you know, it's old. It's been out for a long time. But so worth watching. Freaking brilliant, that one. Um, let's have a look. Kin is really good. Oh, okay. Have we watched Kin? I don't think we have. Kin? I don't know. Write it down, please. Um, yeah. Lynn agrees. TVs and books, please. Prison Break was excellent. Yeah, put it, put, like, watch it. It's brilliant. It came out around the same time, like, way back when things like 24 were doing the rounds and things. And 24 was pretty good. It got really cheesy, though. His daughter really pissed me off at points. She's so stupid. But, um, but, but. Let it go, love. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> it was 20 years ago. <laughs> it was 20 years ago. I think Prison Break might be 20 years old as well. Um, Mr. Mercedes. Mr. Mercedes. Can you write these down, please? Kin and Mr. Mercedes. Audio books. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, so right now um, I'm listening to um, a book called The Wager. I mean, it might not be one that's for everyone because it's a... I guess relatively niche subject, but I'm very, very, very interested and in. I'm always a little bit obsessed by stories of mutiny at sea. So, um, yeah, it's called The Wager. But the other reason I'm reading it is because Henry, Henry of Valgove, who um, did the row last year and who inspired me to do it, it his name is Henry Cheap. And The Wager <clears throat> is all about his, I don't know if it's actually, I should ask him, maybe it's his great grandfather. Um, that's in that book so, so like it's a true story about mutiny and it is phenomenal and I eat that stuff up I love it so yeah that's what I'm reading right now and I am 
loving it. The only the only negative I think for the wager is that it's got an I'm listening to it on audiobook and it's got an American narrator, or at least the version I'm listening to. And I find that really distracting because I want it to be in an English accent because all the characters are English. So I find that a little bit distracting. But you know like when you get into it and you just stop remembering that that is an annoyance. That's usually where I'm at with it. Um, I like listening to it while I'm sitting on my rowing machine. <laughs> it's pretty horrific. The story. Right. Uh, yes, Paula, Homeland was good. I agree. We enjoyed Homeland. The Old Man is a very interesting series. The script is great. The Old Man. Can you write that one down to me, please? The I'm Old Man. Any of these down, Why are you... I'll write it down. Oh, I can't even remember them all now. Kin... The old man, and there was one other. Mm. Oh, I can't see it. Oh gosh, I've missed loads of comments. Sorry. Uh, the Diplomat. I don't think I've watched that, but maybe I have. It does feel familiar. I'm so bad at TV. Like when I watch something, I usually just forget about it. Like the second it's finished. Oh, Mr. Mercedes. Mr. Mercedes. And then Bad Sisters I've watched. There's a new series of Bad Sisters coming out in a few weeks. Um, so that's... I don't know how, where they're going to go with it. It didn't feel like there would be another series, but... Slow Horses is just... I mean, Slow Horses should be mandatory viewing for everyone. Like, it's Slow Horses is up there. We really loved Shrinking on Apple TV. And there's a new series of that out, which we're saving for Christmas. Um, I'm going to pick from the front, okay? Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, what was I saying? Shrinking. Oh, I love that. And we like love the morning show as well. Uh, that was really good. I loved the first series of the morning show the best, though. Lang Tweed is for Badger and Bloom. Oh, amazing. That will be lovely. What is your main colour? That's going to be amazing, Sarah. Uh, the only good thing about menopause is I forget everything I watch, so I can watch it. I'm the same. But I mean, I've, I think I've been that well before menopause. Like, I, like we'll get like part way through an episode, and I, I will swear blind that we've never seen it. And Darren will say, "Well, this is about to happen, and that's about to happen, and then it does." Okay, I am packing. Silky. Still full of excitement now, marriage. Everybody. <laughs> How long have we been married? You want me to count? How long have we been married? Seriously, how long? 24 years. So. Something like that. We're still it too... feels like more, let's be, let's be clear. It's great though, isn't it? Isn't it great? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> it's so great. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> it is great. Mm. I love it. Okay, right. So Silky Twist is what I'm packing next. By Art Yarns, it's beautiful. So this person's got Mercury. What have I called this one? Mercury Sun. Sun? I don't know. I can't remember. Ten forty six. Ten forty six. I think I called it Mercury something. And then this one, I definitely called Curcumin, and this is twenty three ninety seven. And like I said last week, it if it's got a two in front of it, it means that it's tonal. So you can see that that's a very tonal, warm, beautiful golden sunrise yellow. And then some. Chow Goo Fixed Turks in this package as well. Beautiful. Gorge, gorge, gorge. Um, right, hang on, hang on, hang on. I am not keeping up. Oh, shrink it. Yeah, shrink it is so good. Oh, it made us cry a lot. Then there was that show about adoption, which also made me cry a lot, and I loved it. That British one. Do you remember what it was called, that one, where they adopted those two kids? That's so good. It was so good. Um, oh, yeah, I can't remember what it's called. It was really good. I love the I loved the relationship between the two main characters. I love I love their little characters together. Nothing like you and me, but still really good. Uh, trying. Ah, there it is. Yeah, you preempted me with that. Thank you, Elaine. Trying. Yes, that's the one about the, the two, the adoption. Oh, so good. So good. 
Okay, main colour is a blue tweed yarn. Oh, nice blue. I would not have guessed blue is the main. Nice. Send me pictures. Okay. Hitting with my art yarns now. Bliss on the needles. Yes, isn't it? I know it is. So good. And Silky Twist is, I think, it's still a fairly underrated art yarn space. It's definitely one that we don't sell as much of as I kind of think we should because it is really nice. So when I just release some of those new colours, I might make another pattern of it. I, I used it in my Robinia and it was phenomenal. It would make a good halibut. It, even just for the contrast colours, actually, Silky Twist would be really cool because it is shiny and glossy and beautiful, but still woolly. It's, yeah, it would be a good one. Like button, button. Yellow, maybe? No? Okay, great. Uh, does anyone have any tips on how to get a kink out of a Chogu cable? Oh, I don't. I've never kinked any of my cables. Did you, like, crimp it in something, like a car door or something? Um, I don't know. Anyone have any tips? I am no use. I've never done that. Trying, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good one. I think most of the Apple TV, um, Apple TV series have been. Oh shit! Where have I put the number for this one? I did have it in my hand. Oh, it's gone. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, I think I think most of the Apple TV stuff has been pretty good there's been a couple of ropey things but pretty good heat it slowly over the hob and smooth it out what even a chowgu cable like a steel one okay i would not have guessed that these guys are gonna get in my way and do a little bit of darning of ends tonight i don't mind darning ends by the way um for any of the, you that did the polina um, and are thinking, oh my God, have I got another Intarsia project in me at the moment? Um, I have to tell you that this one has way less um, ends and things because it's stranded Intarsia. So it's not like straight Intarsia with a lot of tiny bobbins. Like there's really only, the blue here is just, it's not strand, it's not Intarsia. And then there's one Intarsia piece for each fish and then for these um, motifs. So it's really not a lot. I think this one's got... One, two, three, four, five. So I think maybe there's ten fish on this one. So ten. One fish, two fish, red fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, exactly. Okay. So uh, I steam my cables over the but but is that is that the plastic cables or is it the ch the chowgu cables? I know that you could definitely steam the like the Leica and the micro type cables, they're just the plastic crappy ones. But um, I don't know, can you do it with the steel? It would be good to know. Don't punish yourself, guys. Spend eight pounds and get a new cable. No, that's wasteful, Darren. You should try and reuse your cables. Darren, I'm not seeing a ticket in this one. It's not just me. So I'm not seeing a ticket. Can you just. Um, okay, so this order is for some lovely. Boot clay and alpaca too, in color eleven, with some pretty pink silk mohair by Isaya in color nineteen, and I'm pretty sure this is for uh, a jockle and a but oh no, it's a Swarovski crystal stitch marker in there, and some handy blocking pins which are like super handy. Sorry, Darren. I'm just not seeing it. No, I've used those, but those rubbed out. I can write it on the parcel and I'll go back That's and right. sort. Okay, thanks. This is for Diane. Diane. This is for Diane. I think I think I had a little chat on the live chat with Diane about these colours. Pretty sure I did. Okay. Mm. This one needs some paper cutting. And then Diane's also ordered some nice little Chowgu, not Chowgu, um, coconut stitch markers. Had a little panic yesterday when I thought I'd lost my tin of stitch markers, which would be a tragedy because 
I've got some beauties in there, but I hadn't lost it. I just hadn't remembered where I'd put it and left it. Left it. <laughs> left it on the table. And I don't really know where they were, so I don't know why they were on the table. But my uh, favourite, favourite, favourite stitch marker is that Swarovski Crystal stitch marker by Maliqua. They are, they're on everything I knit because they're phenomenal. Unless I'm knitting on something that's bigger than like a five and a half mil, I think, and then they don't fit. Mm. Right. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Did you just grab that for me? Oh, sweet. So here is a sort of. Oh, it just means my nails are going to be in view. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say Swarovski. They got a bit weird about it. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to say it on the website, but I'm just going to say it. Swarovski, Swarovski. There's one. They're so pretty. So they are um, sterling silver for the hardware portion and then a Swarovski I can't remember what we have to call it on the website something else they used to let their people that bought the crystals use the name Swarovski and then they changed the rules um a few years ago to say they're not allowed to use that name anymore not, no one else is allowed to use that name anymore it's weird do I sell the crystal yeah <laughs> I definitely do sell the crystals stitch markers and that's why I'm talking about them because otherwise that would be super frustrating. We might talk about films that we haven't produced or directed. That'd be weird, Darren. Okay. Anyway, I wasn't talking about films, I was talking about TV series. Okay. Get this one out. I've got so many to catch up to. How long have I been on? An hour. So I'd better call it a day pretty soon. Um, but first, maybe I should do my this week's um, thing, you know, offer. This week's offer. Now, last week I did it so that you had to type a word in the comments, which worked well for engagement. So that was great got lots of comments and then I had to just stop what I was doing every few minutes in the day to um, reply to people and I feel like there must be a way to automate that but I haven't looked into it so that was a little bit disruptive so what's a better way of doing it what is a better way of doing a discount code that rewards you guys that watch the live got any suggestions on how we could do it other than like the ways that I have done it for you guys that like regularly watch this and all ears. I did like the level of engagement but it was um I, I also felt bad for anyone that where I hadn't got back to them in a few hours because people were buying up the stuff and maybe they'd got it before you did I don't know Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just have to say, if you want to use the discount code, and I'll post it in stories, but can you please write some sort of comment in the for the video just to help out? I don't know. What do you think? Um, I could I could just say it here. I could, except that I haven't got it and I haven't prepared it yet. I could just say it in here, but um, but it doesn't help. I can't. Well, I can, but I could, but I haven't because I haven't done it. So I haven't even can't. decided on which yarn I'm going to do, so I can't. But um, uh, also, it just wouldn't really help me with my whole algo algorithm thing. Um, yeah, same. So yeah, it doesn't. Um, I could. Maybe I could do that another week. But it like the point is that I really like like it's good for my Instagram if you guys comment or share or whatever do that thing where you engage with a post. 
so um i want to show you a couple of other things let me just what can i show you oh i'll do this one next and but i won't do it on the screen because i said i was going to go and then we'll go over there and i'll have a look to see which yarn we can put on offer this week really should think about these things before i come on live um so but people are but ask that people come yeah i think yeah that's right that's what i should do is just ask people to comment could i do the halibut jumper as a kit i mean i could but like i could i i could but all you have to do is just add four colors to your cart of woolier if you want to make it um so it's one ball of each color and six balls of yellow is what i used in case you wanted to buy it so i don't, I don't know if it's worth kitting up because there's there's, I, too there's too many variables yeah there's too many really cool ways that you could do the colors and some people have already um booked personal shopping uh, virtual shopping sessions to pick their colors uh which once we launch the cow will be much more of a thing and, but also with this cow I'll do a pre-cal zoom where we can talk about all that kind of thing before people order their yarns. Um, is woolly a warm for winter or is it light? Ooh. It's sort of in between. It's an in between. So it's not like a super warm, like it's not as warm as this guy um, or like something that uses Jensen or, or a typical DK. And it's, but it's warmer than Merino Cloud, but it's not as warm as Boutclay. So it's in between. It's like a nice, light, sling it on over a t-shirt kind of jumper. It's perfect. I love it. Um, and I'm about to pack up the uh, Merino Possum. Is that what it's called? By Circus Tonic. That's this lovely stuff. This colour is Lacuna. It's like a lavender. Would you call this lavender? Yeah. Yeah. A greyish sort of lavender. <clears throat> And it's lovely and hand dyed. Right, uh, so let's walk over to the thing and do a thing. So, what will I do with this discount code? Right, so this week I think I'm going to post the discount code in stories after this is done. So just look out for stories. And um, in exchange for giving you the discount code, whether you use it or not, I would love it if you could come back to this video on my feed and comment on something whatever anything you could leave a tv show recommendation if you want like whatever you want okay what shall i do what shall i do tricky mm. uh the noel went really well last week though like loads of people got that and but if you're someone that got noel maybe you could comment to say how much you love noel on or if you love noel on the um feed for this week when you get the discount code because i would love to hear that oh yeah maybe we should do that one oh, aren't you clever okay spiral grain worsted and dk so spiral grain by earth yarns which we have to discontinue because it's super wash um yarn and it's like the most similar thing I guess for people that know like really popular yarns, it's like the spin cycle type stuff. So it's like we've got loads of colours. So it's the stuff that's dyed in the wool and colour shifting. Um, it does make for a really good contrast for uh, yoked sweaters and, and some of those like Caitlin Hunter type sweaters with, anyway, you know how to use this stuff. Like there's loads of uses for the dyed in the wool stuff. We've got, that's good colour. Like there's loads of them. So we've got it in, um, sport weight and worsted weight um and so i'll put them both on sale and we'll do 15 percent off like usual um i'll put a code in the stories for 15 percent off those yarns they're already quite a lot cheaper than spin circle but they um uh, yeah we, we just can't can't stop them anymore and then just one caveat or not caveat but like a word of so they are called sport and uh worsted but personally I think they knit up more like fingering and DK, just so you know, because they are super wash treated. So they do sit more flat and more drapey than a non super wash treated yarn would. So I would use them more in a fingering and a DK weight pattern, just so you know. Uh, I made the Inclination Shawl by Andrea Mary and it's fantastic. Oh, lovely. Send me pictures. Yeah, we've had, we've had a decent amount going out and like it is really popular for those Andrea Mary patterns, especially, um, 
what's that one that I knit? The Andrea Night Shift. Mary. He loves Andrea Mary. <laughs> Doesn't love Andrea Mary. She's gorgeous. Um, yeah, so although you kind of fell a little bit out of love with Jamie Lee Curtis this weekend, didn't you? I Only noticed. She dyed her hair. Oh, because she dyed her hair. Because I'm that shallow. <laughs> right. Uh, so what was I going to say? Anyway. Oh, I was talking about the night shift shawl. Yeah, so great for that too. So it is the spiral grain. I'll stick it in stories. And in exchange for that, please, could you comment? Please, not, not, not commenting on the story because that just is a DM for me that no one else sees, but commenting on this um, when I put it on the feed. Thank you for joining me. I should really go. I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you, but I will take pictures of these other parcels that I haven't sh shown you today because I've been too busy chatting and I'll put those in stories as well. Okay, thank you for joining me. Bye for now. <laughs>